And joining me now is UC San Diego economics professor Ellie Berman, author of the book Radical, Religious and Violent, The New Economics of Terrorism. And Ellie, what do you think is the most important takeaway from President Obama's speech last night and his address to the nation? To my mind, the most important thing is that the threat has changed and that the administration has a plan to do something about it. The threat changed how so? Well, I think he could have been clearer about this, but I mean, it's, it's interesting. He's the president. He has to balance the need to kind of recognize the threat and reassure people with, he also, with another imperative, which is not to elevate this and kind of play into the, an apocalyptic vision of how important this particular act of terrorism was. But saying the game has changed. Now, we also heard today that the shooters in San Bernardino were radicalized. Um, what's unusual about this case? It seems to be puzzling some of the experts. Yeah, so I mean, among the people that work on this, um, there are three things that are really, really strange. One which is unusual but not unheard of is that a terrorist attacks people that they know very well. He went and attacked people in his workplace. The other things have to do with her. She's a character that we haven't seen before, not in terrorism, not in mass shootings, not in fiction, as far as I can tell. The woman who drops off the child, her infant, with the mother-in-law, and then goes off to create, goes off to commit mass murder with her husband. Um, and I hope we don't meet her again. Of course, yeah. Is this, is it that she's a woman, or is it that she's married and has a child? Both, both. I mean, there have been female terrorists in the past, but the mother with the child, that, 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 consolation, that, that constellation is a very, very unusual one. So not uncommon for women to be terrorists? It's uncommon for women to be terrorists. It's uncommon, very uncommon for mothers. I see, I see. President Obama also said that the shooters uh, went down, quote, a dark path of radicalization, referring to the idea that so many of them referring to as self-radicalized. Right. Uh, how does someone become self-radicalized? Well, I'm not an expert on the radicalization of individuals, but it, these are people who have views that oh, might have been extreme. There might be some kind of a mental illness in the background as well. And they've decided that these extreme views, that, that violence is the solution. Uh, that, that Now, they, that same description could apply to a white supremacist, to someone who's homophobic, but the, the key is to, it, but the key is that they've decided that violence is the right answer. And, and if you start to notice that, uh, well, I guess let me ask you this first. Do you think that self-radicalization or extremism is becoming more common or are we just picking up on it more? No, no, no. It's, it's that, that, that when he says that the threat has changed, that we're in a new phase, President Obama, I wish he would have been clearer about this. ISIS has changed its strategy. Up till a month ago, two months ago, they were mostly concerned with something that was very local. Now, with the attacks in the Sinai, in Paris, and people might not have noticed this, but in South Beirut, there were the, an attempt to attack innocents who were, who were attached to one of their enemies. Um, and that, 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 that's a difference in strategy. These are provocations. It's international terrorism. They weren't doing this before. They're certainly doing it now. Now, what that means for us is that we don't face the same threats that Paris did because we don't have fighters who are experienced kind of rotating through our cities, and that's a success of Homeland Security. But we do face the threat of people who are self-radicalized, and that's what we saw in San Bernardino. And uh, today, uh, Homeland Security said it would unveil a new national alert system for terrorist threats. Uh, the husband and wife, though, in this particular case, these shooters, they were not on any government list. Do you think it's harder now for uh, governments to stop these terrorist attacks, especially if they are self-radicalized? Yeah, so the bad news is it's much harder. If they're self-radicalized, you mean the family, the friends, uh, the relatives, the members of the community, just won't know, won't be able to notice. And this puts a lot more responsibility on everybody to be a little more vigilant. Um, at the same time, the, the, the bad news is, so that's the bad news, very much harder to find. The good news is that self-radicalized usually means self-trained. And so they're not going to have the ability to carry out a Paris-style attack because they don't really know what to do with the weapons when they have them in their hands. So the absolute worst case scenario trained fighters using military grade equipment that we're not facing because the trained fighters have been kept out of this country. 
And, but one step down is untrained fighters using military-grade equipment. Another step down would be untrained fighters using um, much simpler weapons. So let me just, for comparison, Israel since September has been going through a wave of self-radicalized attacks. They're called sometimes lone wolf attacks. Usually what they use are not, is knives or motor vehicles to attack. Now that's 43 separate incidents, 21 fatalities. So again, coming back to the changes that uh, President Obama was speaking about, Professor Ellie Berman, thank you so much. You're welcome.